Welcome back, BC. It's been quite some time since I did a video, so if you're watching this, I want to thank you for uh, sticking with the channel and uh, returning to watch uh, this video here today. It's uh, Saturday morning. I uh, just had a storm roll through, so I thought this might be a good opportunity to uh, finally hit record and show you my 10 most listened to records. Um, might have a bonus here. Um, so essentially, Vinyl community folks are, are showing what they consider to be sort of the 10 go-to or the 10 most listened to records in their collection. Uh, of course, not necessarily the favorites, but from time to time, if you're thinking about what to, to listen to and you're really not sure what's going to uh, strike a chord, these are records that uh, more often than not and others uh, that I find myself uh, going to. Um, a lot of them are older records. A couple of them are from the 2000s, and so you might say, well, why are these kind of on a list that they're you know, more recent, where older albums maybe you've listened to much more, uh, but they're uh, simply uh, too great for me to keep off the list. So I'll start with uh, two from the 2000s uh, right off the bat. Um, the first one is um, uh, Joe Strummer's Street Corps. Uh, this was released in 2003. It was a uh, posthumous release. Uh, I think Joe died in December um, the year before that. But um, originally I bought this on CD, which I still have. And this recently had been reissued. And uh, it's just a fantastic record. Even when I play it now, um, I have my, my girls who are now adults. Uh, they think back to when uh, when they were younger and listened to songs like Coma Girl and Get Down Moses uh, does a great uh, rendition of Redemption song. Um, and one that I really like is uh, Burning Streets and Midnight Jam. Uh, just a fantastic record, Street Core from Joe Strummer. Another one from the early 2000s, I believe this originally came out in 2004. Uh, this was a band that actually I just vaguely heard of but never really knew who they were what they were about and a band that actually uh, I got onto thanks to my dad and that is Social Distortion this was released in 2004 uh, Sex Love and Rock and Roll this album in particular was one that brought that was brought to my dad's attention by a colleague of his um, my dad in turn purchased it listened to it I got hooked on to it as well, and uh, I absolutely adore this record. Uh, it was my first of Social Distortions. Um, since then, I think I've picked up a couple extra of theirs. Uh, they're more of their back catalog. Uh, but Reach for the Sky, Highway 101, uh, Don't Take Me for Granted, Footprints on My Ceiling, Winners and Losers, um, and it ends with Angel's Wing, which is more of a kind of a slower ballad like type song, but I just absolutely love this record, Social Distortion. This is an album that came out in the 80s, late 80s, I want to say. No, early 80s, 1982. Um, Roxy Music's Avalon. I remember as a, as a young man, teenager, my, uh, at the time, uh, uncle who just... Uh, met uh, a new lady in his life they got married and this was an album actually that they both had and my dad um roxy music avalon and uh more than this of course was the big hit off of this song but i really love uh, while my heart is still beating the main thing take a chance uh just a fantastic record i was lucky enough to see um roxy music when they reunited i think in 2099 or 2000 something like that able to see them. Uh, fantastic album. Kind of haunting and eerie at times. Fantastic. This is an actual favorite of mine. Um, as I say, the, these records don't necessarily represent a favorite album from a particular artist or band, but this is, is my favorite um, album by them. And the original mix, uh, Animals, was recently Remixed, which is actually quite good sonically, but uh, I love the dark, muddy, original uh, mixing of Pink Floyd, Animals, uh, Pigs on the Wing 1 and 2, uh, Dogs, Sheep, and uh, uh, Pigs. Dogs is my all-time favorite um, Pink Floyd song. Went back and forth between Dogs and Metal. Metal's just fantastic, maybe a great signature 
song from the Floyd, but Animals is, uh, I mean, I know this thing uh, from start to finish. Every note, every lyric, just fantastic stuff. Animals, 1977. Uh, I like this. This is my favorite Beatle, my favorite Beatles solo album, and an album that I listen to more than any other solo album, and I even listen to this album more than any Beatle album. And that is George Harrison's All Things Must Pass. Um, fantastic. By far the best uh, Beatles solo album that I enjoy. Um, I just absolutely adore this album. Released, of course, shortly after the Beatles uh, disbanded. Um, love George Harrison. My favorite Beatle. Um, go to this all the time. All Things Must Pass. Probably in my top five, maybe seven Neil Young albums, um, but I listen to this one uh, more. It's just it's heavier. It's it's with Crazy Horse. Uh, I'm trying to look here what year it came out, but it's not jump 1990. Um, I was lucky enough to get a copy of this. It's hard to find on vinyl, uh, but this is Neil Young and Crazy Horse, Ragged Glory. This thing is just uh, edgy, rough, dirty. I absolutely love this record. Love Neil Young. Don't spook the horse. Ragged Glory. This is probably, I'm just looking through the last, uh, I haven't even counted. I, like I say, I think I have one extra bonus album here. Um, this one might be my, for years, I just went to this one more than, than, than so many others. Um, great artist who I love. Um, not a favorite, but I just, 1971's Love It to Death by Alice Cooper. I just, fantastic. I, <clears throat> not a bad track on it. I go to this album still all the time. Released in 1971. Uh, Alice Cooper to this day remains one of only two artists I've ever been able to uh, see from the front row live. Bob Dylan being the other. Uh, actually, I've seen Alice twice from the front row from the front row. Uh, Love It to Death is just, I mean, phenomenal. Cotton a Dream. I'm 18 with the big hit, How Will Be My Name. Um, the, maybe one of my favorite Alice Cooper songs, The Ballad of Dwight Fry. Uh, Second Coming, Sun Arise. Just, I mean, this is my favorite Alice Cooper album. Killers is, is quite strong. Billion Dollar, Billion Dollar Baby is also strong, but Love It to Death for me. Probably my second favorite Black Sabbath album, but I go to this one the most, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. Great cover, front and back. Um, so many greats on this, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath, of course, National Acrobat, uh, the wonderful uh, acoustic, and I think even Mellotron on Fluff, Sabra Kadabra, Killing Yourself to Live, Looking for Today, Sabbath. My favorite era of Sabbath, which is with Ozzy. Grateful Dead. This is probably my most played Grateful Dead album simply because of a couple of tracks on here which are just absolute earworms. Leads off with Bertha. Uh, it's just the lead guitar into Bertha on this just comes into my head all the time and I just put this album on. Playing in the band is also a, a, a great one on here. Um, I think this is, they recently reissued this, but I think this is my original, which actually still has the, uh, the sticker in it. Um, known as the Skull and um, Skull and Roses album, Grateful Dead, love it. I have a tie. I got two, two, well, three records, but two artists to show you. Uh, my favorite band of all time. Neither of these are my favorite. They're in, definitely in my top five, but uh, these are the two that I go to the most. Uh, the first is uh, 1973's Goat's Head Soup. I love everything about this. Um, Silver Train, 100 Years Ago, Coming Down Again, just Ballad by Keith, just fantastic uh, with the uh, with the Goat's Head uh, little poster, picture, bonus photo, if you want to call it. Uh, it's Goat's Head Soup and also 1969's Let It Bleed. Probably my favorite album from 1969, and it was just the perfect record, I think, to end the 60s. Everything about it is great. It's just one of the Stones' best albums that uh, that they ever recorded go to this all the time best band for me and the last one of course I had to um, 
show and from one of my favorite artists, if not uh, on and off my favorite artist of all time, uh, and that is Elvis. And I'm decided to show this one. This is this is the album the album that I go to the most, and I'm showing you this particular pressing, which is from Elvis in Memphis. This is the uh, MoFi One Step. I recently bought this. I haven't even opened it yet. This will be my listing copy um, with this quality. Now hoping and there have been some issues with some of the pressings on some of these copies um so provided it's a uh, a decent sounding um pressing of this record i can see this being my uh go-to album there's nothing on the back they're limited uh number limited to ten thousand. i think i've got 3187 there but this will be 45 rpm my go-to listening copy my most listened to elvis record probably number two or number three as a favorite um, Elvis is back is easily my favorite Elvis record, but this is the one I probably listen to the most. Again, this is the MoFi One Step. So there you go, top 10, maybe 11, listen to albums. Uh, thanks for stopping by and watching. Uh, please leave me a comment. I'd love to uh, catch up with many of you. I hope this finds you well and enjoy the rest of the weekend. Take care.